Yo, yo, man, what's good? It's your boy, Jess B, and welcome to... Active Ingredient is your boy, Icy Jones in the building. Now, Active Ingredient is a podcast that explores the essential ingredients it takes to become successful for you. Because it ain't always the same ingredients for everybody else. Can you agree with that? Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about, man. You want to introduce our guest today? On Active Ingredient today, we have Big Keith Bowen, founder and owner of Bully Buster 702. And we got the Big Keith Institution, man. What's happening, man? Yeah, man, man. First of all, man, thank you guys, man, for inviting me out, man. You know, I've been doing a lot of stuff, and you've been watching me. We've been watching each other. You know, I knew you when you was 12 years old. That's how (laughs) how long I know a lot of you guys, you know, man. So um, I'm excited now, man. Absolutely, man. Welcome to the show. Yes, man. This is great, y'all. This is the show right here. Guess what? I'm number one. Stop playing. (laughs) He the the soldier boy of active ingredient. (laughs) Yeah, I'm in the gold chair. The first to do. Yeah, check this out. Before you get here, make sure you sit in the gold chair. If they don't put you in the gold chair, man, that means you ain't playing. You, you don't make it. To, you got to make it to the gold chair, man. This is it. This is y'all right now. Okay, I need to get to the gold chair. I Go feel ahead. that. So, Big Keith, man, welcome to the show again, as Icy Jones said, man. But I got to say, uh, this is my first time I to feel like officially meeting you in person. See me everywhere. Yeah, I see you, but we ain't never officially met. So, honestly, I don't know nothing about you, man. Give me a, a little quick synopsis, a little, a little quick preview okay, wait, of, wait, of who you are, what you come from. All right, for pretty much, you know, I came out here about years ago, and, you know, I came out with a vision. And, you know, we all have visions, and I tell everybody the same thing, man. Your purpose is your purpose. What you vision in your head is yours. It's going to be some people that say, ah, oh, no, it ain't going to work. There's going to be some people that say, oh, there's so many people that's going to give you negative stuff to stop you from chasing your vision and your purpose. Mm-hmm. So what I pretty much did, going through what I went through, I just used that as my purpose to help other people be successful. Because it's not like when you leave here, you don't take nothing with you. But what you leave goes on. Absolutely. So me, myself, I give. I'm a giver. You know, some people say you got happy givers and you got people that just give because they have to give whatever, you know. Facts. You have to be a happy giver. If you're not a happy giver, you're not going to reap what you do. Don't give begrudgingly. Yeah. So with that being said, when I came out here, man, I created my own street team called Mm -hmm. Big Key Street Promotions, where I did all the record labels came and they had to come through me to to the city. So if you was Master P and you had a street team, you'd call me and say, Big Key, I'm sending my guys there. We got this person coming this week, whatever. And then what I would do is turn around and call Icy and them. My Mm -hmm. people that was out here say, yo, we got a job. DJ Slim, I man, everybody was doing magic. This is when magic came. This was like 299 Mm -hmm. when I first got here. I got out here doing the Lost Boys. So my whole thing was always entertainment and clothes. Right. I can tell because you always fly. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, clothes, man, and I was a promoter. So my thing was I got with everybody that was doing the parties and I created my own job pretty much. Yeah. Because now I got a dream street team where if you want to come in at that time, it wasn't no no internet. So, you know, we met each other. We did deals on handshakes. You know, we got conference calls where everybody's switching phones. To be, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was a more of a everybody. Blessed worked, era. <laughs> every, yeah, everybody worked together. And it was so funny when I talked to Icy and a lot of other guys that was coming up at the time. We didn't even know what we, what we was into until now that we looked back and said, man, if I would have known what, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I got my little crew here and we mm-hmm. all stuck together. And how we, I paid everybody because I didn't have money. I paid them with clothes and music. So that oh, means, and some, they was youngsters? Oh, they was up. They was up clothes and music. What? Oh, they was on. They was on. We in magic. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about the newest music too. It ain't even touched. Anything man. that I mean, I was getting it from the record labels because you gotta understand. I had, I did a a big keep video cam TV where I just had a video camera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Went everywhere with it. Went everywhere with it, man. I had everybody. Then I was around everybody because I was doing entertainment. So all the big parties that was in Vegas, I was the promoter for it. And that's why a lot of guys like I know the pimps, the plays, the hustlers, everybody because. I'm this kind of person. If I know you can raise spend five hundred dollars in the club or something, mm-hmm. I'm not making you stand in line to pay twenty dollars. God bless you, brother. Yeah. You, know, and, <laughs> you know that just didn't work for me, and that's why I got a lot of extra love from a lot of the people in the community, and I I got Godfathered in in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And if people don't know what Godfathered in is, means where you come from somewhere else, and the next city you go to, they embrace you, and you part of them now. Yeah. That's a fact. And that's the only reason why I'll be able to have my school in the 89106 mm-hmm. because the Lou Collinses and the Jazzes and the Ices and all the people that was born and raised here take me in. It ain't easy, 
Oh, Vegas ain't easy. Bro, trust me. You can come be, <laughs> bro. They don't play. It's a, they don't play. Hey, he ain't lying. I'm born and raised in Vegas. And bro, even even now in our music industry, don't play, bro. It's, you don't, it's, 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 they don't, they don't, we don't just embrace people. No, you can be here 30 at years. All. Like, I've been here 30 years. And they look at you and be like, you wasn't you, born and raised. Yeah, you yeah. wasn't, that's the, see? That's oh, the, right. Yeah. You wasn't born and raised. They all say the you same You ain't from thing. the 89106. I've been here 30 years. Bro. <laughs> you wasn't out here when this was dirt. You know, they. <laughs> And I be sitting there holding my head because people, like I said, people think just because you're in a different city and you've been there so long that people take you in when mm -hmm. pretty much they just deal with you because of have, what they have to do. Yeah. So with me doing that and what I did, what I always did was give. When I came, I came with something. Yeah. You know, I didn't come and say, help me, help me. I came with like, y'all, look what I got. Y'all ain't never seen this? A lot of them was like, no, nah, I ain't never seen this. I said, well, come on, ride with me. We going to the Magic. We doing all the, the shows. And putting my personality. Posters. posters, let me tell you. My thing was putting posters in the seat. So they'll send me a thousand posters. Mm -hmm. So I get everybody at night, and we'll go around, and we'll hit all the places. Plastic. After a while, the mayor called me into the office. True story. Called me in the office. Said, Big Keith. I said, yes, Mr. Goodman. <laughs> he said, uh, I know you're doing the street promotions. Good job, all that. He said, two things I need to tell you. He said, I said, what's up? He said, one, two things. First thing you're not going to do is the airport. I said, all right. I okay. That. And my Las Vegas strip. I don't care if it's a sticker post. I don't want nothing on my strip. And since you're in charge of everybody, that's how you try to do it. Like, you're in charge of everybody because mm. I pretty much know all the ladies. We said, just tell them it's $500 each sticker or poster that's being put on. Oh, it's a strip. fine. It's a fine. Well, we would have been fined up. So, and so let's go back to Master <laughs> P and them. So, you know, yeah, the No Limit Soldiers came out here one weekend. Right. Yeah, yeah. And by the time that bill was over, it was about $7,000. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, man, I created something where when people came in our city, we all worked together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even with the parties and everybody. And see, I loved when the internet came, it, it stopped a lot of stuff because people do it on the internet. But just mm -hmm. going into the barbershops, the nail salons, you know, giving people flyers and posters, you know, you have to have a special personality to do that. Yeah. Everybody can't do it. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, you got to have a personality because... People are weird. You know what I'm saying? Like I tell everybody, when I wake up in the morning, I look at me in the mirror, I'm like, I love me some me. I love me. I don't care what nobody, I love you, but I love me more. So, you, and you what, better love yeah, you. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, be sitting nowhere yeah, with yeah, just be at if you yeah, don't love yourself. Come on, man. How we going to get somewhere? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How we going to get somewhere? So with me creating that, I always had a nonprofit or something that I work with that because my son, I was a single dad. My son's raising my son three weeks old. So I always wanted to create something where I had my own job where mm -hmm. if I had to go to school, all that, you know, Lil' Keith is, you know, he's, he'll tell you, he's magic everywhere. That's my son. He went and played basketball, graduated school and all that. And people right. look at us, man, be like, oh, you men can't raise him. Trust me, Lil' Keith is phenomenal. And I raised him since he was a baby. I walked him through everything because what a lot of people don't understand and women don't understand about us men, we, we move different. You know, you might get emotional about stuff and we're not emotional about it. It's just that mm -hmm. we deal with things different. Mm -hmm. It's not that we don't love you or we're not, you know, we feel your pain. It's just that we don't feel, we don't be, Ugh! we can't do that because nine times out of ten, a lot of stuff we can't tell y'all anyway because you're stressed out. Just like, for instance, say, hey, so-and-so is being a pain in my butt. Then they see that so-and-so and look at them more ugly in the face. Be like, no, I ain't mean for you to say that. You know, they'll be like, right, don't right, look right. at them different. I was just trying to vent for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we deal with different men, and communication is everything. Right. Communication is so. When I opened up the the Big Keith's house, I did that. I was in the community center, mm -hmm. and the boys needed that because there wasn't no men around doing right. stuff and looking right. like me. Right. Looking All like the me. fathers was elsewhere. Yeah, they. Yeah, they. But looking like me because you still got to dress the part. Right. These kids are sharp. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can't dress regular and tell you to be better. So. And it's no what every way you see me, man. No matter how much I got in my pocket, I'm looking good. Right. I don't care. I'm I'm look every day. I don't. I, don't, I it's mean, gonna you know, I don't know if I all the way agree with that. I don't think but, the I don't think the clothes make the man. No, no. But in this era, you know, we 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 moving up to this era now because they go on what they see and what they look at now. They don't go for what's inside. Mm. A lot of the kids now that I deal with, they look on what you before, even before they let me in. They say, "Oh, big keep, look at your sneakers and all that." Then their right. guards go down. Back in the day, world. yeah, back in the day, you can just you you hear a grown man speak. Mm -hmm. You know what oh, that you is. Perk up. Yeah, you sit up. You know when you are around a grown man. Yeah. So now you got to play. You know, kids look at all this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I get home, I take all this off. You know, I get. My big old, st you know, I get to get. I don't cigar. even know what that would look like. I don't think I ain't never seen that one me picture. Either. You, know, <laughs> you know, me either, man. In the house, I even match. My wife would tell you, my son, my pajamas match. He's like, man, I'm like, where's the socks for these pajamas? How am I getting to wear the socks for the pajamas? pajamas Have y'all ever heard of that? Oh. 
<laughs> socks for the babe, pajamas. Babe, you know I wear the socks with the pajamas. I can't go to sleep. And they, you know, it's just that. But I, I let them look at that because I never sold drugs. Yeah. I never did anything that when first people get an impression of me think I do. Right. Because if you look at me and I'm walking and they think I'm a rapper or I'm, I'm two chains or, I'm, you know, I'm always somebody else. You know what I'm saying? But me. Yeah. And I'm 60-something years old, man, and I still play basketball. You 60-something? I still play Damn. basketball. He'll tell you, I used to be about, the, I used to be about two hundred and sixty-five pounds. Yeah, but I was big. My legs was rubbing together, man. I was stressed out. Yeah. I used to, have to, I used to have to put them. I walked around with a face cloth all the time. It was like, nigga, you hot? I said, oh no, I'm hot. Sweating. I'm he said just my sweating. legs was rubbing together. Yeah, I mean, my shorts used to come up in the front and hang down in the back. Yeah, I had to get the. But, oh wow, so Keith, you go from from Big Keith's house to Bully Buster Seven Hundred to Bully Buster's. And Bully Busters came in, and that that story started in 81, where I won a state championship in high school, because you know I played that ball, and I wear that ring to this day. And this year I was going to leave out the school, and I wanted to go to St. John's. So this is when I started Big Keith's house. I still had Bully Busters in the cup, because I had to figure out how I was going to do it, because that's a real touchy, touchy thing there. When you touch that, you got to jump all the way in. So what I did, I tested the waters with Big Keith's house, to see how I can interact with the kids, would I be able to get the kids? Because remember, I was going to all the boys and girls clubs and all that. I practice it there for a reason because all the kids that go to school go there and all the kids that don't. That's a fact. All the kids after school, Absolutely. the boys and girls club, you get the kids that's hanging out in the street or come home, you get the kids that go to school and that's how they class. So what I did, I practice it there because that means I get everybody's attention and it ain't like back in the day where you can get the cool kids to get everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody got a little click, so you got to get everybody. So you got to do something where you can get everybody's attention at once. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with me being an entertainer, as me hosting parties and doing all that, I can always get people's attention, but it had to be what I was saying. It had to make sense. So when I created Bully Bus, is because... When Matt in high school, and this is 1981, I was getting ready to get my scholarship, and this one I learned about boosters. A principal called me in the office, and the coach, he said, Slim, I was slim then. He said, Slim, you had a great year, you know, you want to get in St. John, but you need science. Me being a basketball player for that last two years, I didn't go to science. Why? Because I was a star basketball player, and it was after lunch. I went and played basketball. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, that's what we did. They don't want to learn chemicals. Yeah, I said, man, dunk. I didn't like cutting the mice up. And then we had real animals back there, too. They wasn't on TV. They had like a, had a frozen mouse in there. And ah, I'm good. I'm going to go play basketball. <laughs> so they said, hey, mouse. you got to take signs, but you got a 60. I said, I got a 60. I said, well, I'm scratching my head. I said, well, I ain't never been in there. So I got, all right. So they said, <laughs> they said well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get you a tutor. Mm. We're going to get you a tutor. You can get your grade up. You got six months to get your grade up. You just need, you got a 60 now, right? I said, mm -hmm. okay, y'all, I got a 60. Right. So you just need to get like over 65. So I'm a basketball player. Come on, we just won deep, two state championships. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Back there, what you did is how you did it, but you still had to be able to pass. And that's the only thing that pretty much got me through because after this thing happened with Matt, this had me look at people different because that people reacted different to me that wasn't my family. Yeah. So make a long story short, he said, you're going to get a tutor. So he said, your practice is at 3, so at 2.30, you're going to go to the library, see your tutor from 2.30 to 3, and you're going to work on science. So me, I'm going to say, okay, cool. So I'm thinking I'm going to get a cute girl. So I'm like, yeah, buddy. Cute girl, lunch time. <laughs> come so on, that's, now, why you went, that's why you went? <laughs> yeah, who else going to be there, man? I'm like, right. you know, my mind's, I'm, come on, I'm a kid, man. Yeah, you know yeah, saying? facts. I'm walking around with basketball jerseys on, state championship. You know, I'm, I'm cool. So I walk in the library, and I'll never forget, I walk in, I see two people. I see Jeff, he's a football player. Mm. He's just as dumb as me. I know he ain't teaching me nothing. And then I see. <laughs> he said he's just as dumb little, as me. Yeah, I think yeah. I was a little smarter than him, so I know he wasn't trying to teach me nothing. Oh, dead. Oh, so wait. then I seen Jeff sitting over there with a pocket mm -hmm. protector, do that. You know, when you play sports and you win, and with, even if you don't, everybody know you. Yeah. So, you know, I'm in the lunchroom. I used to see, man, I used to hang with the, the square kids and all that. So I'm looking at him, he's looking at me, and I'm like, Man, you wait for me? He's like, come on, Slim. Let's get this done. So now I'm looking at him like, let me tell you, the first three days, man, I tried to cheat everywhere. I said, man, can I write it in my hand? Can I put it on my shoes? Right. I said, no, Slim, we got to do this. You can do this. He made it like basketball. Mm -hmm. What you love. Mm -hmm. That's he how it got you hooked. That's made it so like basketball it. and to the point where I got like a 73 on this test. Right. So now I'm amped up. So now I took the test on a Thursday. We had that game on a Friday. And, uh, and then I come back to school on Monday, and then they call me in principal's office, and they say Matt committed suicide. 
Mm. So now I'm like, I'm like bugged out. I'm sitting there. I'm like, now nah, you gotta understand, man. I'm 17 years old. This mm. dude just helped me get, you know. I just want to. I got my grade up. Want a state championship. Right. I come back to see him and you know hang with him because even a week before that he was hanging with me a lot and mm -hmm. people was like, hey Matt, you know he hanging with Slim, you know. Come on, right. man. The white dude with the black guy, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, and it was cool. And he never got that attention. Mm. So now even to this day, man, and I tell people nobody looks like what they've been through because after he committed suicide. I lost my mother that week from cancer, mm. and then I lost another good person to me that committed suicide. So mm -hmm. that three months, I lost everybody that like I felt cared for me. Yeah. And with Matt caring for me like he did, that's why I get to spread love to everybody else, man, because it's possible. Yeah. No matter what color you is, man, as yeah. long as you're on the same mission, whatever. Hey, I believe gonna, that for real. It's going to make sense. So when bullying started coming back, my son was at school, and bullying was started, and he got pulled in for getting some kids off. Some kids that was getting beat up. Mm. So then I said, all right. And at this time, I just got off the Scream Tour. Because mm. I did all five Scream Tours with Bow right. Wow, Marion. I did all them. So I was like, yo, y'all, I'm getting ready to start this program. But I need kids to run it. Mm -hmm. Then I had a couple of child stars that was in the community, like Teshi Thomas. Were, were you ever, were you ever, uh, every, ever, what am I trying to say? Were, were you, you ever, ever bullied? <laughs> were you ever bullied? Of course not. I'm a basketball player. That don't mean nothing. Does. All the girls love me. Well, I got bullied one time, but that wasn't my fault because she picked me. She didn't pick him. So, you know what I'm saying? That's, you know, he, that was something that he had to get over it, and we still was friends. But, like, bullying where I felt like something like that, I never yeah. had to because the way, the way I carry myself and when I see things like that, I try to move in different directions. And I, even when I was hanging with the gangsters and all that, man, you know, when they want to go do certain things, you know, I didn't want to go and that was cool. They made fun of it, but then I was the one later on that they called right. and I'd be on the phone and say, ah, I told y'all don't go. You know, right. I was okay being myself, being this dude that didn't want to go breaking nobody's house mm -hmm. or didn't want to, I said, I'll sit here, but if you got away, I want something. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right now, mental health is, you know, at an all-time high. All-time high. And, um, People know about it. It wasn't talked about in the 80s, not the early 90s, mm -hmm. none of that anxiety, depression. You know, we just knew about suicide, but didn't know how to deal with it. Right. When do you connect the bully busters to mental health? Or have you have you done that? Do you work with other mental health advocates, mental health companies and, when it comes to bully busters 702? And matter of fact, we just did something with the news. I just been on there uh, talking about that right now because everybody got to understand these kids is more emotional now than that we were back then when we was tough. Okay. So that means when you're more emotional, you use your brain a lot. Yeah. You know, you, you put things in your brain. If you don't see it, you put things there to make it complete. Yeah. So now, nine times out of ten, when a kid goes to school in the morning, they dramatized already. They got stuff on their brain. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get them to go and focus on that in school and try to focus on where they're going to sleep, how they're going to eat, mommy's arguing, daddy, you know. Mm -hmm. There's so much stuff that kids put on themselves yeah. that a lot of stuff that we didn't know about growing up as kids. Why? Because we didn't get to sit in those meetings when it, was really, when it was really the bread and butter, you know. Why we got candles tonight? Right. Oh, we getting the lights fixed. They'd be on them all. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, we, well, we, had, we playing lights. We playing candles tonight, y'all. Right, Come right, on. Right. Ooh, we cold. Why is it? Oh, the furnace <laughs> broke. It'd be ready back up. Right. Right. The air broke. <laughs> yeah, we, did, we, did, we didn't know none of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now, the kids in the era now, they're in the middle of all that. So now, that's putting more stuff on them. They're trying to figure out how you're going to get it done. So now, how you think they're going to go in school, sit down, and be productive mm -hmm. where it's not being productive at home? Yeah. Then everybody learns from the house. We don't learn outside and come inside. Mm. So you know we all got different households. You can come to my house and sit your butt down and my mama tell you how we's going to move around here. Or we can go to your house and go yeah. to the refrigerator and run around the house yeah. do whatever we want to do. Or we can go to his house and we got to do something else. Mm -hmm. But everybody's house is different. Yeah. So if you screaming at your house all the time for to get your point across and you get outside, what you going to do? You're going to scream. Right. Yeah. So now when you're screaming at somebody, what they going to do to you? They're going to scream back. Yeah. Because it's a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Any action that you get, you know what I'm saying, it's, 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 it's going to be, that's what's going to be making it happen. So with that being said, man, you just got to connect it in. And that's where it comes with the parents, man, because mm -hmm. they got to disconnect. Yeah. And what I try to do, and I tell a lot of parents, I can't be in your house, but I can be your black Dr. Phil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because kids, first of all, you don't want to tell your kids, that, oh, hey, daddy, that's little daddy. No, first of all, he's not daddy. Right. And you don't need a man to have a boyfriend to make sure your kid is successful. Who preach? Because... 
Everybody got uncles and cousins or something. You know, we all got a couple that ain't doing something, but we got a couple that are. Yeah. So we used to want to send Facts. them around to the people that's doing something, at least got a job and taking care of themselves and say, okay, you can be around that person. You know, we got our people that we can, oh, don't send them over there, but yeah. we can send them over there. You don't need a boyfriend so or anybody else. To you're raise. more hands on. Like, you take care of everybody. Yeah, we take care of everything because you got to connect it. You can't take care of one part. Even when I get the kids that come see me, community service, or two days a week, the parent got to stay with me because they got to relearn their kid. Yeah. yeah. So, so when a kid walks into the Bully Busters, you know, and I know it's right over there on Owens and right on Owens. And, yeah, Owens. you're across the street. Keith Bourne Art and Technical Art Educational and Technical. Institute. Got you, got on you. On the west side, 89106, right so there. So when, the they, when they first walk in there, I'm, I'm a 15-year-old kid. I walk in there. What's the first thing I can expect to have? First thing you're going to see is me all over the place, blinged out, <laughs> looking good, walking down the hallway. <laughs> This is true. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell you. The judge, even when I go to the courts, and I go in the courts like this, man. Mm -hmm. And the judge said, man, that's the coolest. That's our coolest guy over there, Big Keith. You want to go hang out with Big Keith? Right. He said, yeah, we want to go hang out with Big Keith. Let me tell you. Every kid that went to me to tell the judge, can I stay? Can I come back? Man, that makes One thing a parent told me. Thank you for giving my kids life back. How much do you think you can pay me for that? Mm -hmm. It's priceless. So when people say, oh, how much it costs for you to go, Big Keith, and do this and all that, I said, I said, just tell me what we're doing and, and we'll make it happen. But you got to understand, this is real stuff. When you get yep. bullied, like you said, remember yep. the time it happened, what day it was, if it was Everything. raining, whose birthday it was, you remember that. Hey, I remember what dot I was standing yeah. on in, in the other picture. You don't, yeah, <laughs> for real. Yeah, you don't, people don't forget it. And that's why I said when I jumped in it. Jumping in the bully, I had to be open to everybody's stuff. And even yeah. in relationships and everything, you know, I'm a communicator. So I'd rather have you communicate. Yeah. Let me communicate back to you because going back and forth like that, I ain't good at that. And then I'll shut you down saying something slick, which, you know, if I have to talk to you like that, mm -hmm. because some kids ain't ready. So when you walked in that door, now you got to make up your mind because now you want to know who I am. Yeah. First thing off their mind, they looking around like. And then here I come out the back looking like this. Mm -hmm. And then when you come in my office, there's more of me around. Right. Trophies, shoot, anything you need, you can get in there. Right. But all my trophies is first place trophies. Right. I ain't got no second place. So what do you think your active ingredient is? What do you think that one thing about you, besides, we ain't talking about the outside. You told us all about the clothes. Yeah, right? I know that already. We want to know about the inside, though. What's that one thing on the inside that you feel like is the reason why you're successful? What's your active ingredient, man? What's your active ingredient, My man? My active ingredient, man, and first I want to give everything to God, man, because he put this in me because okay. everybody can't do this. Mm -hmm. You know, because we never think we we doing something like, you know, we want to be something. But God put something in us that we need to find and that what we would do. To make a purpose, and it's my purpose that things that I need to be doing, and that keeps my life. I got three things that's in my favor: faith, purpose, and favor. Yes, sir. Those three things right there has been getting me through everything because God is good. Yeah, because and even all old, the time, I, and even <laughs> when I, I try to hang around older people and learn stuff, because when you, when you younger guys is around me, mm -hmm. I gotta I gotta have some answers. Yeah, you know, I, I got anybody older than you need to know a little more than you. Yeah, and it's, it's, we should be the ones where you guys come and say, hey. You did this already. Even like now, when I call Damon or P, anybody I call, I don't ask them for anything. I ask them for advice. Yeah. That's priceless. Yeah. Imagine talking to one of them for five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Right. Yeah. You don't have to give me no money. Right. Especially I'm talking to you and you did it already. Yeah. And when I call them and, and I asked Damon last long time, I said, man, why you hit me back all the time? He said, Vicky, you never asked for nothing. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You talking about the owner of FUBU? Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. I worked with them for 15 years, and I watched them, too. And I was older than everybody, still running around like this. Like, Big Keith is 50? <laughs> he what? But these kids, you know, I got short people walking behind me. I got everybody. <laughs> Who's this Big Keith dude, man? Everybody seen me, my energy. I don't care who you was, man. I put a camera and a microphone in your face. My energy, you're going to talk anyway. Because you're right. looking at me like, first of all, I'm crazy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, man, let's, you know what I'm saying? So I put myself in a position that I've been the same all the time. Yeah. I want to pull up this I Black like Image magazine. Yeah, I I see, show me some up yeah. in this thing, man. Let's talk about I that. I made it to the Black Image magazine. And, I love uh, Kimberly and, yeah. and her husband, man. They, yeah. they're Charles, they, yeah. it's so funny. I remember when I started, when I had T-shirts, and I just got off the news, Fox 5, and I had a couple of T-shirts and just my vision and, yeah. and getting these kids together, man. They told me, because people was always trying to shut me down. Oh, he ain't going to be able to do this. Big Keith ain't going to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what gives me energy. People don't understand. you just giving me gas. Right. Because I'm not one of those dudes. I'm a winner. I like to win. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why when I tell kids, why do you think Michael Jordan and LeBron and all of them, after they get the taste of winning that championship, they mm -hmm. want to go back. Right. And that's how I Facts. live my life because I always was winning. 
So even no matter what I put my everything in, I'm winning it. Another thing that I do every day, I do something to get to that space. Mm-hmm. It don't have to be a lot. And I tell all of us, all of us, is, you ain't got to do a lot every day, yep. but you need to do something every day exactly. to get you in, so that now you got to pace yourself and you keep it moving. People get excited. We all got ideas, man. I mean, our ideas is busting out our heads, but when we present it to people, they look at it and they want to do their evaluation of it. Yeah. Pretty much, I really don't need your evaluation. You know, I'm just saying it because, see, me and you, us three can have conversations. It's not mm-hmm. like bragging. Right. You know, I don't want to be in, in meetings with people where we talking and it's, somebody feel like we all bragging. Right. No, right, it's not. Right. It's all that we at a certain level where we communicate, where yeah, we can this move is how to we talk. Yeah, this is how we talk. It ain't that I'm better than you and you're better than me. Right. And I don't like to sit in those kind of meetings because they go in circles. Yeah. And I've been invited to a couple and, and I, I excuse myself because yeah. I, don't, I don't like the, this stuff here because there's no out. Yeah. Because we all has, have opinions. Yeah. And I don't like sitting around dictators. Yeah. People that dictate, that means that it's just their way. Right. And I get it because when you're that person, but still, when you do it that way, you, you're shutting people out because everybody got ideas. Yeah. Just like, you know, me and my man, Y.E. Poet, everybody that we deal with, you got, you know, we got people that's with us. Mm-hmm. Nobody can do this by themselves. Yeah. yeah. But some, I wish somebody would say, oh, I did this by myself. Boy, bye. Can't yeah. nobody do nothing by themselves, man. You, you can't, man, because you need a team, and that's why God <laughs> built people yeah. how he built people, so we can build stuff. UTH, you know, man, we in yeah, a some building. Yeah, some people can do windows. Some building. people can do floors. <laughs> some people can paint. Some people, you know, everybody got their own little thing that they can do. Yeah. And how, lo- how long has the, has the institute been open now? It's been two years now. Two years now. So next year will be 3, 2024? What you doing for it, man? man? I'm getting ready to do something big. You know, somebody said something to me last night, three, man. Three, three, three. I see. We bring the we bring the red carpet ready, y'all. Yeah, Is that yeah. what we're doing? Bro, let me tell you something, man. You know, everybody talk about LeBron James and all those guys that got money that open up schools and all that. Nobody's talking about this. Yeah. I'm an entrepreneur, man. Black man, and I'm in the community giving to the community. Nobody talks about it. Yeah. And then people say, you know what they do? This oh, big keeps hard to deal with, or big keeps that. You know, don't let my confidence mess with your insecurities because mm-hmm. this is me. Mm-hmm. If you feel like that, I'm sorry that you feel like that, but you need to put your energy on something else because my energy is for making people better. I love to see people succeed. Right. Especially these guys and guys that I know when they's coming up and I seen they in their eye like, yeah, y'all gonna go because they see it. It can be achieved. Yeah. If we're not showing our black kids anything that we can own stuff and have stuff, what do you think they want to have to do yeah. something like that? I get praised with that little school that I have there for just taking the time out and doing it. Yeah. Forget what I'm doing on the inside. Mm-hmm. Let's say, oh, I ain't doing nothing on the inside. Right. I opened up something out there where you can go in there and no matter what, you can get what you need. Yeah. Because if I don't have it, I got two cell phones. Yeah. Have a seat a minute. Man, I, I seen you linked up with uh with my brother, brother uh Robert Twix Taylor, man. I seen he man. just brought you over all of them screens. I got a couple of them in my truck. <laughs> Shout out to R. Sands and uh 412 Creator, man. He asked me to help him Bro, set up a few, you feel me? Twix is amazing, man. What's your take on Twix, man? That man, brother... let me tell you about Twix, man. Sister introduced me to him. He was 16. Whew. Yeah, I think he was 16, 17. Yeah. And she said, to, you got to meet Big Keith because that's when I was, and that's when I was hyping my, you know what I'm saying, my promotions and marketing mm-hmm. and all that stuff, man. And after she introduced him, man, we've been, he been calling me, I've been calling him. Yeah. He he puts, he tells me what because a lot of people, man, we got to motivate each other. Yeah, facts. And a lot of those black men don't do that for each other, bro. Facts. And it's, Since we on this topic, man, I just uh, <laughs> one thing that I've been having an issue with, maybe probably like the last two to three years, is brothers. And sisters that are brought on to different teams that I have um, that we were building. And, and instead of going into it as we're teammates, they they'll look at me as competition. Yeah. And then they'll drop off. Yeah. How, you know, what, what kind of advice could you give? That's good. You know what I mean? Somebody it's, like that. like and, that's, and see, that's you going through your people. You know how many people I went through to get in a position where I'm at? Mm. That I got Y.A. with me? You yeah. got to go through it, huh? It's gotta go through it. You just yeah. want you just want to have less damage control as possible. First of all, you want I, I had a problem where I got too comfortable with people because what they do, they see what you're getting, and mm-hmm. that's how it always happens. Because you remember, you're a boss. Yeah. So boss have to do boss things, and if you're not doing boss things to control your environment, and how things is because how you move is how your people move. So if you're moving messy and reckless, they're gonna move messy and reckless. But if they see that you're moving in a way where it's gonna be where you're gonna have to follow. T- some direction, anything like that, you're gonna have backlash. Yeah. 
But the people that get your vision, because remember, it's your vision. Mm -hmm. You're having people come in and help me. And like I tell people, just because you're helping me with my vision, I want to help you with yours. And this is what I do to everybody. Everybody that work with me, what you want to do? You helping me do this. What you, want, what you like doing? Well, I want to do radio. I'm, well, I'll help you do that. See, so when you do that with people, you know, they don't seem that, you know, you're like, oh, me, me. like, mm -hmm. And it's, it's just being humbled. Yeah. But then when you still be humble and they still do it, then it's time to be like, okay, I get it because. Yeah, because that's where I'm at. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to chase you now. You know, yeah. I, I like you. It would be a great relationship, but, you know, yeah. just certain things that it's rules to everything, man. Yeah. It's rules how you tie your shoes. It's rules how you walk, how you sit. You know, it's rules and everything. So when you communicate, especially as being a boss, you got to make sure you communicate everything because people get, they look at you and, and count, start counting your stuff. Yeah. Unless and even family, family do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you all of a sudden they see you doing a little bit better, they start peeking over on you like, "Hey, you, you looking kind of cleaner than you was last week." <laughs> when big, I wore that green suit, yeah, you got a big that's smile. That's what they was doing. You got a big smile on your face. What yeah. are you so happy about? Right. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Man, it's just it's just people that you're gonna have to go through. You're gonna yeah. have to. And and it's on, imagine if we met the right person every time that we want to do something, and we met the person, the world would be great, huh? Right. Everybody's going through it. Everybody that's even these superstars and all that. And like right. I said now, being a superstar and all that stuff is different because when I ask people and kids, I say, if you can be anybody, who would you want to be? A lot of kids was like, oh, you know, they saying rappers on. Who would you want to be? Me. Who would you myself. want? I'm gonna be myself because I don't know what's going on in the mother oh, people's body. Oh my mama! <laughs> like you can said, be you can be barking like a Jones. I love yeah, some of me. I love I just me. Yeah, yeah, but I don't want to be barking at the like a dog or ow and right. doing those. With, I don't want to have that, and I don't yeah. know what that person has. So I'd rather have me build me up because what I did, even with coming up and putting my stuff together, people that I looked up to and, and the thing that I was trying to do, I took certain parts from everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it wasn't like stealing, it was like borrowing. I just took a couple, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't know it was missing. Right. Because what I did, I took some knowledge and just put a little twist on it. So the same concept, but a different kind of concept mm -hmm. is the twist on it. Let me ask you about entrepreneurship. Can you give three pointers to that camera for entrepreneurs out there? Yes, Black, sir. white, doesn't matter. Yes. Entrepreneurs in general, can you look at the camera and give three pointers to the people watching? First. First. You have to have a good team with you. It could be one person, two people. Mm. You have to have somebody that's with you, a good team. It could be three people the most that knows your vision, know where you're going. Second, whatever you're doing, and people need it. Make sure there's a, a use for it. Because a lot of people create things that's not really a use for, or what they're doing, they're in competition with so many the things. The solution to the problem. That's right. Got it. Okay? You, 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 you have to have something. Pick something. Like, okay. Like me with bullying, nobody's doing it. Mm -hmm. They doing it, but they wasn't doing it like me. I had to do bells and whistles. So right. I got a 24 hour hotline. I got the website. They got I got action figures. They got socks. They got tours, you know saying, coloring books. Yeah, coloring books, cartoons. Cartoon. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's that's my thing. That's them. The other people just got a book that they gonna read. Yeah. You know, we all can do that. I seen Facts. a guy get ten thousand dollars for reading a book, Whew. and it wasn't even his book. Mm -hmm. So I'm in there scratching my head. I said, man, I just got three thousand dollars for putting on a whole show, mm -hmm. right? And I just made a whole school a safe school. Yeah. So that that's number two, and number three, you have to have faith, y'all. I don't care mm. what. Never let nobody discourage you from what is yours. Remember, this is your vision. You 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 don't think in everybody else's head, and you're gonna have some people that's gonna be like, eh. Then you're gonna have some people that be like, yay, those are the people you wanna be around because when you're around more positive people, it's gonna be more successful and then they get more, you'll take ideas from more people yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, instead of people telling you what to do, they say, hey, guess what? What about if you did it? And nine times out of 10, sometimes we might say, hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now they feel part of something. Even sometimes if you don't use it, mm -hmm. I, I did it a couple of times. I'm one of them dudes that did it that somebody came up with an idea, I let them run with it. Yeah. Cause now they part of something. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. cause when you take their little, Things that they have, you don't want to do that. Because yeah. remember I said everybody got their own vision. Right. Yeah. So those three things right there, man. You I like those three active ingredients yeah. for entrepreneurs, man. Got, On everything have, I love, man. And, and what's so funny, you don't have to be, even with me, with going and doing what I'm doing and mm -hmm. surviving and living, man. I go through stuff, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And people Facts. say, Big Keith, what you do with everything that, man, you take everybody's problems in every day. I mean, every day I listen to people. I was on the phone with a parent yesterday got on the phone at 1 30 i ain't saying nothing until 2 45 mm -mm. they were talking they need us people need us sometimes though i don't clean but you be like uh, 
Bro, okay. but, but <laughs> remember, it could be draining. remember yeah. I opened up that hotline, that Bully yeah, Buster facts. hotline, and okay. it's 24 hours. I yeah. get calls at 2 in the morning, mm. and I had to go through two services before even somebody even took it because nobody's calling saying, hey, hi, hi, I'm happy. Right. Yeah. First thing they call is like, help. Yeah. So, you know, you got to have an answer service that people going to be like willing because the yeah. first two days are, oh, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Barno. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is- man. And you know what? Speaking of how you have that hotline and everything, that's a beautiful thing because, you know, especially for people that deal with mental health, that got mental health See, issues, imagine. anxiety, depression, and imagine all of that. Imagine you call that, somewhere. You you're trying to call, trying to call Icy or something, right? Yeah. You're going through something. Yeah. And you call and you get an answer machine. Yeah. I'm, your talking whole, your the, whole, I'm talking to the answer machine. But still, your whole demeanor and everything. <laughs> that could be the end. Yeah, that, that could be it. Yeah. yeah. By the time that I had this for 10 years, man, I had to stay on the phone twice with kids until the police got there. Because when you call and it comes through there, it tracks. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I had to do the everything. You know, if you call from there and I'm on the phone with you, it can track you. Yeah. And that was another thing that I started going in with parents because a lot of parents is leaving their medicine out. Right. And I wanted mm-hmm. to touch mm-hmm. I want to touch on that too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get y'all a little safe box and all that because you got to understand these kids can take your medicine, look at it, bloop, and they'll Listen. tell you exactly what it is. Right on the internet, mm-hmm. right off the phone. And take pe- a picture of it. A lot of people don't understand too. Another thing I want to touch, man, in the last couple of months, man, we done lost like 15 kids, man. Like, yeah. where they go? Mm. Man, that's unfortunate, man. Where, where they go? I'm, you know, I, you, ain't, you know, it's, it's a lot of things that we don't talk about that's really going. They starting to talk about it now because all these celebrities and a lot of stuff is starting. To, and they starting to crack that mm-hmm. shield. But there's a lot of stuff going on we're not talking about, man. But we got to save ours. Yeah. You know, I know my culture. Yeah. Like even when I go to other schools, different races and all that, I got to bring somebody with me. Mm-hmm. But when I go to schools that I know my culture, I don't need to bring nobody but my people. Right. Because I know what they need. You know, something hit, and it was literally in my backyard. So I live in these houses, and right behind my house are apartments. And this man ended his wife's life, his life, and two of their children's life, and one of the kids is hanging on. It's crazy. And we all need mental health. We all need to be able to call somebody. We all need to be able to click in with that face somebody. and move forward. You feel me? So And you don't have that time, and that's why when I create that I want us that to clean up our backyard, though. We, we got to clean yeah. it up. That's what I mean. like, you know, we, got, we yeah. got to, man. And, I, and like I tell you, even with that hotline, man, we get calls at 2 or 3 in the morning. That's that last resort where they just talk. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, if you don't get you get that answer machine, that might be the last time you try to reach out to anybody because that might have been the last lifeline. Yeah. yeah. But when you call that hotline, no matter what it is, they're happy. Bully busters, how can we help you? If it's one in the morning, two in the morning, yeah. three in the morning, I don't care what time it is. Hey, don't just, be surprised if you hear just be on the answer but, machine. Let me tell you. Because I will buddy, call. <laughs> let me tell you. I called my buddy on his phone from there. Him and his daughter was having a little argument. Mm. So I, my other phone died, so I called him from the bully buster hotline. Right. So he called the bully buster hotline and went to the voice thing. And they said, hello, bully busters. So... First thing he thought, he said, that little monkey to call the police on me. <laughs> oh, man. Then after he started thinking, he <laughs> called me back. He said, man, that was the wrong time to call me, man, because me and my daughter was going through it. I thought right. he called you on me, man. Oh, but, man. Yeah, man, you know, it's, it's they need these things now, mental health. They don't have, remember that soda can effect? Yeah. They, they don't have, what, come on. So tell yeah. us how we can follow you. Tell us what we can do if we live in Las Vegas, you know, how to get in touch with you online for people that don't live in Vegas. Talk to them real quick on how to get to them. Okay, well, y'all, first of all, we got a couple of things in December, and I know this get ready to come on real quick. So I want to let y'all, on the 16th, we're doing the Fleet DJs down there for Christmas. Mm-hmm. On the 23rd, we're doing another uh, Christmas over in the plaza and what we're trying to do too. A lot of incarcerated parents, kids is coming. Mm. So I got a little room where they coming just to get some stuff, you know, because mm. they need to, man. We're doing a lot of stuff. Okay. Then we got the the, the uh, documentary coming out with YA. You know, he got a hot fire documentary that I mean from 1999 all the way up you know it's gonna nice. be real big man nice. we got a lot of things going on cameo. Man. and I'm coming back with Ghetto Fabulous TV okay. I'm coming back with that man so I'm just trying to get these kids in and pushing their cartoon yeah. you know they can go to bullybuster702.org they got the new radio station at 24 hours if you got clean music the kids to come there they can listen to it they can call in and also we got the cartoon so this is what I'm doing with the cartoon you guys I'm doing something after January, where I'm having some kids read, and I'm gonna pick ten kids, and the ten okay. kids that I'm pick, mm-hmm. they're gonna be able to be in the cartoon. Nice. Voice over work. Yeah, voice. It's a job. Yeah. Remember, yeah. Tessie and them did it. Mm-hmm. That was a yeah. job. You get to put that on your resume. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? you dope. get voice over and over. Then at the school, we teach all that. We get English, math, science, editing, video production, printing T-shirts. Anything that you need, man, we, we do it down there. Absolutely. So, you know, I just want to thank you guys, man, for letting me come and, and hang out with you guys, man. I you see. got that number, man? And the number? 
702-292-5023. Once again, that's 702-292-5023. And don't forget, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Part of the problem. Man, thank you again for coming and sitting down with us, brother. Yeah. Hey, active again, active ingredient is about the essential ingredients that it takes that's built into a person that allows them to find and be successful, man. And Big Keith, you one of our success stories, brother. Now that's you know dope. me, huh? Yeah, now I know you, man. <laughs> you know, I, plus I've seen you in my grandpa store a few times. Mario, you know, Mario's just my grandfather. Yeah. So I've seen you around. I just never. We just. I was always working and really didn't have the time to stop and talk in the moment or something. But now I know you, man. And now when I see you, I'll approach you all the time. Yeah, that's you it. Feel me? And thank you, guys, man. And I want once again, man. You guys, man, follow your dreams and your passion, man. Yes, sir. Your purpose is your purpose, and this is what we need now, where people can talk about what's really going on instead of sugarcoating stuff. Yeah. And you guys ain't gonna let nobody sugarcoat on your show anyway nah. when you sit in this gold chair it's, it's game. game it's, it's game, game. Hey, it's, it's, it's golden it, but it's, it's the yeah, spotlight it's is on you it's on you so you better be, you better, your words better come out right you better say the right thing because you know boy oh boy they'll let you have it man I just want to yeah, thank you yeah, guys yeah. Hey, hey man y'all tapped in tuned in too I see and just be and it's, it's under the hood ingredient oh it's active ingredient and it's under the hood my bad Jones <laughs> <laughs> bang